Good afternoon, I'm Spot On Weather Meteorologist Matthew Euler, and today we're going to take a look at something very important in our lesson, the Earth's climate. So there's a lot of debate about what's going on in Earth's climate. You know, are, is global warming by man creating a, an accelerated global climate change? Is this a natural cycle of the Earth? Uh, I'm not going to really get into all the specifics on my personal opinions on this topic. Um, but I am going to really focus in on the types of things that go into making the Earth's climate today. So we're going to go ahead and start it off with what's the difference between weather and climate. All right, Weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a particular time and place. For example, if I made a statement saying today is going to be hot and humid with a 20% chance of rain, that's pretty much stating what the weather is going to be like, or is the weather going to be windy today, or it's going to be cold. Uh, that's the state of the atmosphere at the current, basically at a particular time and place. Whereas climate is the average weather conditions in a certain area over a longer period of time. Typically what scientists look at is 30 years is the data sample set. All right, so an example of a climate statement would be the average high temperature for Norfolk, Virginia is 68 degrees Fahrenheit All right, for a certain time of the year or for a certain day of the year. So that's basically, I like to look at it like this. Weather is what you get and climate is typically what you expect. So think about the next time you go on a trip or you plan to go on a some type of vacation somewhere. You typically want to look at the average weather, which is the climate for that location. All right, so there's five factors that really shape the Earth's climate, and this is what we're going to really delve into on today's Spot On Weather lesson. We're going to take a look at latitude, the seasons and the latitude and how they tie in together, the prevailing winds, the geography of an area, and then ocean currents. These are really the five major factors which shape the Earth's climate for a certain area on the globe. So let's start off with latitude. And when we talk about latitude, what we're talking about is the distance north or south measured in degrees from the equator. And the latitude generally ranges from zero degrees at the equator itself all the way to 90 degrees north or south latitude all the way at the top of the pole, the North Pole, or at the bottom, the South Pole. Latitude really is important in determining Earth's climate and it determines how much solar energy reaches the Earth's surface. And it's based on the Earth-Sun relationship. So that's latitude. Um, so basically, latitude determines how much incoming solar radiation a certain spot on Earth gets. When I tie in latitude and seasons, all right, this is based on the Earth's orientation in relation to the sun. Different lines of latitude receive varying degrees of sunlight and, and, and varying degrees of how high the sun gets in the sky, known as the solar altitude. The solar rays hit the area around the equator much more directly, almost at a 90 degree angle, creating higher temperatures whereas solar rays strike the surface at a much lesser or lower angle at the polar areas. So the lower the angle, the lesser angle will spread the same amount of solar energy. That makes it spread out over a much larger area, resulting in lower temperatures. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that the Earth is tilted on its axis at 23.5 degree angle. This is known as a plane of the ecliptic, and this tilt effect affects how much solar energy an area receives as the Earth revolves around the Sun. Because that's what happens. The Earth revolves around the Sun. It rotates on its axis at the plane of the ecliptic, 23 and a half degrees, the way the tilt is in space. And that really impacts the amount, again, of how much solar energy reaches the surface. Now, during our winter months, the southern hemisphere has higher temperatures and longer days because it is tilted towards the sun and receives more direct energy. The northern hemisphere, on, on the other hand, has lower temperatures because, and shorter days because it's tilted away from the sun. And the exact opposite occurs during the summer months. 
So let's take a look at solar energy and latitude. Okay, so we talk about latitude, we talk about seasons. Um, first of all, if you notice the globe here, right, 90 degrees north latitude is the North Pole, and 90 degrees south latitude is the South Pole. And so basically, the Earth is revolving, okay, or is spinning, I should say. The Earth is spinning. And then if you notice, if the sun was sitting out here in space, if the sun is shining onto higher latitudes, there is more tilt of the Earth's axis, the 23 and a half degree, this imaginary line here, which results in a much larger circle at the higher latitudes. You notice how much wider this circle is compared to the equator where the sun shines down much more directly and results in greater heating per surface area. So look at the difference there in latitude and how the sun's rays spread out on the Earth's surface. Much larger spreading out of rays at the higher latitudes compared to the equator where it's much more direct. Latitude and seasons, again, what you need to know here is that the Earth will revolve around the sun in 365 and one quarter days. That makes up a calendar year. Now during leap year, you typically get an additional day. Um, so that usually happens once, well basically once every four years. But so you have the Earth revolving around the sun and during the March 21st and September 23rd, the vernal or spring equinox and the autumnal or fall equinox, the Earth is pretty much positioned with in respect to the sun to where all latitudes receive 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. And then look what happens on December 22nd, which is known as the winter solstice, where the northern hemisphere is tilted away. It's away from, tilted away from the sun. And then the opposite occurs June 22nd, the summer solstice, where the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So you notice the light here over the North Pole? This is a time of the year where the North Pole can get 24 hours, gets 24 hours of sunlight. Opposite occurs at the winter solstice where the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun is in the complete shaded area here or darkness. Prevailing winds. Now, prevailing winds are the winds that blow mainly from one direction within specific latitude belts and they influence an area's moisture and temperature. For example, if San Diego has onshore winds from the cooler Pacific Ocean waters, they generally have a cooler climate because of that. If San Diego has offshore winds, on the other hand, from inland desert areas in Southern California, they typically have much warmer temperatures. So the prevailing winds really mean a lot as far as the temperature is concerned. If we look at the global picture here, um, the blue lines or the blue, blue arrows here represent the westerly winds which typically occur between 30 and 60 degrees latitude. Then you have these yellow arrows which represent the tropical easterlies where the prevailing wind mainly blows from an easterly direction. And then these brown arrows, uh, these also represent the southeasterlies, more tropical easterlies. And then these blue arrows again represent the westerlies where the wind, predominant wind is from west to east. So everywhere in the middle latitudes, west to east, west to east, and then in between you have these tropical easterlies, which the predominant wind is from the east. And that makes up a, that really plays a big role into the climate of a specific region. Now looking at geography, mountainous terrain can influence an area's climate by affecting both temperature and moisture. Uh, for example, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the tallest mountain in Africa, has snow-covered peaks year-round, even though it is only about three degrees south latitude from the equator. You would think, okay, by latitude, Mount Kilimanjaro is close to the equator, so it should receive more direct sunlight. However, its elevation and its height basically um, counter that latitude and result in a very cold climate. Elevation is the height of the surface landforms above sea level. So at the top of mountains, the air tends to be much cooler. Air typically cools as it rises away from the Earth's surface, and you typically get wetter weather at the top and on the windward side of mountains. So if we were looking at a mountain diagram, and this typically happens especially in Hawaii, where you get the prevailing northeasterly trade winds, where the wind will blow up against the side of the mountains, the hilly terrain, and if the prevailing wind blows against a mountain, it cannot blow through it, 
it's forced to go up and over the top of the mountain and then come back down. And as the air is forced to rise, that prevailing wind is forced to rise up the windward side of a mountain, the air rises, cools, and condenses, and typically you form clouds and precipitation. And then on, once all this moisture is basically rained out on the windward side, as the air sinks, this is something known as a rain shadow effect. And that typically occurs, especially in the Pacific Northwest, if you were to look at Seattle, Washington, versus the other side of the mountainous terrains, the Cascades, if you were looking on the other side of the city, you would notice a big difference in the vegetation, much greener on the windward side in Washington State as compared to the leeward side where you get to be more desert. Um, so uh, really interesting the way prevailing winds impact and interact with the elevation of landforms as far as determining climate for certain specific locations. And then we have to look lastly at ocean currents. These have a large effect on an area's climate and ocean currents are typically either cold or warm. They are stream-like movements of water that occur at or near the surface of the ocean. And these currents are affected by wind, the Earth's rotation, and the location of continents. As surface currents move, they carry warm or cool water to different locations. With cool currents, they always occur along the west coast of continents, resulting in cooler year-round temperatures and I want you to think about the west coast of the United States, for example. We were talking about San Diego earlier. Most people think Southern California, oh, nice warm water, great beaches. Yes, the beaches are great, but the water is not necessarily very warm because you have a uh, cooler ocean current, the California current, that comes down from the north along the California coastline. Keep in mind also that warm ocean currents are located along the east coast of continents around the world. This results in more extreme temperatures year-round, muggier, higher humidity, and warmer temperatures. Here's an example of the ocean currents diagram, and everything on this graphic here, if it's, a, if it's a red arrow, it's a warm ocean current, and if it's a blue arrow, it's a colder ocean current. So just for the United States alone, let's take a look. You typically have a colder California current which comes down the west coast of the United States. All right, that's a cooler current. And California happens to be in the prevailing westerly wind belt, which means that the wind's going to blow over that cooler ocean current, resulting in a moderate or mild climate, not a very hot climate. Now, if we were to go to the east coast of the United States, let's say, for example, off of Georgia or the Carolinas, we have this warm Gulf Stream current which flows basically from the southwest to the northeast. And that brings up much warmer water from the tropical regions. And if you have any kind of wind that blows in off the water in the summertime, that usually results in hot and humid, sticky type weather. Okay, there's other ocean currents that play key roles. Uh, there's a north equatorial current here that goes from east to west. Um, these, these currents here in the tropical um, wind belt typically follow those prevailing uh, winds. Uh, there's also the Kuroshio current off of the west, western Pacific Ocean, which is very similar to the Gulf Stream current off the east coast of the United States. And these also, these ocean currents also act to stabilize and destabilize uh, the atmosphere, the air above them. All right, so that is all I've got for the lesson on Earth's climate. We looked at the five factors that shape the Earth's climate. And standing by for any questions, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Spot on weather. If we're not spot on, we're not doing it right.